The Clarius enhances procedural safety because it acts as a layer of precaution. My name is Dr. Zainab Al Mukhtar. I'm an aesthetic dentist by background and I've been practicing facial aesthetics for the last 10 years. I now practice facial aesthetics full time and have hung up my dentistry hat for the time being. I lead a facial aesthetics team here at my clinic, Harona Hill Dental and Facial Aesthetics. I'm also an aesthetic injectables trainer and have been teaching for the last nine years. I have a particular interest and commitment towards safe practice and to contributing to the industry in empowering practitioners with the safest methods that we can. I started using ultrasound in 2021 and the reason was because I had come across a complication uh, that my colleague was managing. She actually wasn't the injector of the patient but she was managing it and she managed it superbly. Everything was gold standard, it was quite a complex vascular occlusion or vascular compromise and it had already led to the beginning stages of necrosis. And despite all the best measures that she had taken, the patient required ultrasound to finally be able to alleviate that blockage. And unfortunately, at that time, there was nobody who was willing in London to see that patient for an ultrasound scan. And so that patient then traveled all the way to Scotland to have a scan done. I realized that that really should not happen. And it sh patients should not be in that position where it's that difficult to get access to ultrasound. And given the volume of noses that I was treating, I decided that that was an appropriate time to look into uh, starting ultrasound in my practice. I think it must have been only a week or two after that incident that I said to my colleague, I think we should have ultrasound. We both ordered our first ultrasound device, the Clarius. When I first introduced ultrasound, I was mapping the whole face as much as I could. I was very curious and wanted to see all the vessels and wanted to see all the layers. This was not a realistic thing to keep up. It meant that I was often running behind schedule. So over time, having done that, I evolved my practice to make a conscious decision that I would scan and map particularly high-risk areas. So I now make a point of pre-scanning the temple, the nose and the piriform fossa. And indeed, the center of the chin if I'm using a biostimulator that is not easy to dissolve. But always the nose, the piriform fossa and the temple. So I pre-scan. Uh, in some situations, I use it for ultrasound guided injections of filler and unique circumstances where I see that it's necessary. So for example, in the nose, when I'm treating the lateral aspect of the nose, when I'm treating the whole nasolabial fold subcutaneously, and when I'm treating the temple in the subcutaneous or intrafacial plane. This is how I like to explain it to patients. It's an additional layer of precaution. It does not mean that I eliminate all my usual universal precautions that I take. I still use all of my other universal precautions, just as I always have done, except now I have an additional layer of precaution. And I think any precautionary tool that we can have, we should utilize in the interest of safety for our patients. The other thing I tell patients is, just to be you know, fully transparent, is that just like all the other layers of precaution, the ultrasound does not fully guarantee no complication can happen, but it certainly puts us in a better position. It certainly has changed my clinical decisions. And because I've seen that it's changed my clinical decisions, it's very clear to me that it has great value. I have definitely seen an improvement in patient trust in two different ways. One is that there is a lot more patient education now around complications. Patients are particularly aware that there are higher risk areas in the face. They're particularly aware of some of the potential complications that can happen. So patients are much more hypervigilant around treatment and around the choice of practitioner. And so I have seen that the kind of patient that I'm now attracting is the more hypervigilant type of patient. But this is not a bad thing. This is a good thing. Patients should be aware of the risks. And I feel that if they are conscious of risk, they are more likely to be making sensible decisions around their treatment and well-informed decisions. So these are the patients I'm seeing, and I am noticing that they are seeking out the practitioners who use ultrasound for certain aspects of the face, and the trust is a big factor here in terms of the relationship with the practitioner.